We want freedom by any means necessary. We want justice by any means necessary. We want equality by any means necessary. We, we want it now or we don't think anybody should have it. So whatever kind of action program can be devised to get us the things that are ours by right, then I'm for that kind of action no matter what the action is. I don't think when a man is being criminally treated that some criminal has the right to tell that man what tactics to use to get the criminal off his back. When a criminal starts misusing me, I am going to use whatever necessary to get that criminal off my back. And the injustice that has been inflicted upon Negroes in this country by Uncle Sam is criminal. Don't blame a cracker in Georgia for your injustices. The government is responsible for the injustices. The government can bring these injustices to heart. And what you and I have to let the man know is we are peaceful people. We are loving people. We love everybody who loves us. But we don't love anybody who doesn't love us. We're nonviolent with people who are nonviolent with us. We, but we are not nonviolent with anyone who is violent with us. But when someone attacks you, when someone comes at you with a club, when someone comes at you with a rope, when someone comes at you with a gun, despite the fact that you've done nothing, he tells you, suffer peacefully. <laughs> Pray for those who use you despitefully. Be long suffering. And how long can you suffer after suffering for 400 years? <laughs> the most disrespected person in America is the black woman. The most unprotected one, a person in America is the black woman. The most neglected person in America is the black woman. And as Muslims, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad teaches us to respect our women and to protect our women. And then the only time a Muslim really gets real violent is when someone goes to molest his woman. We will kill you for our woman. I'm, I'm making it plain, yes. We will kill you for our woman. We believe that if the white man will do whatever is necessary to see that his woman gets respect and protection, then you and I will never be recognized as men until we stand up like men and place the same penalty over the head of anyone who puts his filthy hands out to put in the direction of our women. That whenever a people come to the conclusion that the government which they have supported proves itself unwilling and or proves itself unable to protect our lives and protect our property because we have the wrong color skin. We are not human beings unless we ourselves band together and do whatever, however, whenever is necessary to see that our lives and our property is protected. And I doubt that any person in here would refuse to do the same thing were he in the same position. I'm speaking as a black man from America, which is a racist society. No matter how much you hear it talk about democracy, it's as racist as South Africa, or as racist as Portugal, or as racist as any other racial, so, racialist society on this, on this earth. The only difference between it and South Africa, South Africa preaches separation and practices separation. America preaches integration and practices segregation. This is the only difference. They don't practice what they preach. Whereas South Africa preaches and practices the same thing. I have more respect for a man who lets me know where he stands, even if he's wrong than the one who comes up like an angel and is nothing but a devil. And the only way we can bring about a change is to talk the kind of language, speak the language that they understand. The racialist never understands a peaceful language. The racialist never understands the nonviolent language. The racialist, we have, he's spoken his language to us for 400 years. We have been the victim of his brutality. We are the ones who face his dogs that tear the flesh from our limbs only because we want to enforce the Supreme Court decision. We are the ones who have our skulls crushed, not by the Ku Klux Klan, but by policemen, only because we want to enforce what they call the Supreme Court decision. We are the ones upon whom water hoses are turned with pressure so hard that it rips the clothes from our back. Not men, but the clothes from the backs of women and children. You've seen it yourself. 
only because we want to enforce what they call the law. Well, any time you live in a society supposedly based upon law, and it doesn't enforce its own law because the color of a man's skin happens to be wrong, then I say those people are justified to resort to any means necessary to bring about justice where the government can't give them justice. Let us remember that we are not brutalized because we're Baptists. We're not brutalized because we're Methodists. We're not brutalized because we're Muslims. We're not brutalized because we're Catholics. We're brutalized because we are black people in America. They put Moses in jail. They put Daniel in jail. Why, you haven't got a man of God in the Bible that wasn't put to jail when they started speaking out against exploitation and oppression. And once the white public is convinced that most of the Negro community is a criminal element, then this automatically paves the way for the police to move into the Negro community, exercising Gestapo tactics, stopping any black man who is in the, on, on the sidewalk, whether he is guilty or whether he is innocent, whether he is well-dressed or whether he is poorly dressed, whether he is educated or whether he is dumb, whether he's a Christian or whether he's a Muslim, as long as he is black and a member of the Negro community, the white public thinks that the white policeman is justified in going in there and trampling on that man's civil rights and on that man's human rights. Who taught you to hate the texture of your hair? Who taught you to hate the color of your skin to such extent that you bleach to get like the white man? Who taught you to hate the shape of your nose? and the shape of your lips? Who taught you to hate yourself from the top of your head to the soles of your feet? Who taught you to hate your own kind? Who taught you to hate the race that you belong to? So much so that you don't want to be around each other. No, before you come asking Mr. Muhammad, does he teach hate, you should ask who yourself who taught you to hate being what God gave you. And I, for one, as a Muslim, believe that the white man is intelligent enough. If he were made to realize how black people really feel and how fed up we are without that old compromise and sweet talk. Stop sweet talking. Tell him how you feel. Tell him how, what kind of hell you've been catching and let him know that if he's not ready to clean his house up, if he's not ready, to clean his house up. He shouldn't have a house. It should catch on fire and burn down. We declare our right on this earth to be a man, to be a human being, to be respected as a human being, to be given the rights of a human being in this society, on this earth, in this day, which we intend to bring into existence by any means necessary. <laughs> Mr. Moderator, our distinguished guests, brothers and sisters, our friends and, and our enemies. <laughs> Time out for you and me to stop running away from the wolf right into the arms of the fox, looking for some kind of help. That's a drag. In you. He's trapping you. He doesn't call it violence when he lands troops in South Vietnam. Please, please, please. He doesn't call it violence when he lands troops in Berlin. When the Japanese attacked Pearl Harbor, he didn't say get nonviolent. He said, praise the Lord, but pass the ammunition. My reason for believing in extremism, intelligently directed extremism, extremism in defense of liberty, 
extremism in quest of justice is because I firmly believe in my heart that the day that the black man takes an uncompromising step and realizes that he's within his rights when his own freedom is being jeopardized to use any means necessary to bring about his freedom or put a halt to that injustice, I don't think he'll be by himself. I live in America where there are only 22 million blacks against probably 160 million whites. One of the reasons that I'm in no way reluctant or hesitant to do whatever is necessary to see that black people do something to protect themselves, I honestly believe that the day that they do, many whites will have more respect for them and that there'll be more whites on their side than are now on their side with these little wishy-washy, love thy, love thy enemy uh, approach that they've been using up to now. And if I'm wrong, then you are racialists. <laughs> and I might add, in my conclusion, in fact, America is one of the best examples when you read its history about extremism. Old Patrick Henry said, liberty or death. That's extreme. <laughs> Very extreme. And, and yes, we have a lot of black writers and photographers and journalists out here in the audience. And I think that, frankly, I'd like to point them all out to you so that when you see what they write, you'll know them. <laughs> and they'll know that you know them. And they'll always write right. Right? Right. Right. That's, that's the only way you get a good job done. Let everybody know where it's at. <laughs>